the tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? The first identity crisis that we see actually happened in Genesis. Uh, there's a genesis to everything, right? Everything has a beginning. Um, the Garden of Eden is a representation of that beginning to where we are today. One tree is the representation and the result of where we are today as a whole. The tree of knowledge of good and evil was in a, a symbol, example of that dark light, right? So if you can see on the left, the tree of life, uh, at the roots is God, the spirit of God. Uh, at the, on the right, the spirit of Satan resides in the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And what I mean by that, uh, just to give a quick synopsis, when God created uh, uh, heaven and earth and man, and he placed man, mankind in that garden, there was two trees amidst the whole garden of Eden, that forest. It was the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God said, Adam, you can have anything in the world. Just don't touch mine, right? And it, it, it's likened on to, we can't say, I, I use this as an example, we can't say we love chicken. Chicken is the best. I, I, I'm always love chicken if we're not represented with a steak, right? There has to be free will. There has to be a choice to show your love for me, right? I can't say I love my wife if we stuck on the island and she's the only one there, right? There has to be other beautiful women around and I still choose her and it makes it more of an impact. So God said, this tree of knowledge of good and evil, this is mine, don't touch it, right? But if you notice in the Bible, uh, prior to, now we know from Revelation, Jesus told us that he seen Satan and his, uh, the third of the angel cast down his lightning. So we know Satan was here on the earth prior to uh, Adam. So my thing is, uh, when Adam came on the scene, and like I said, man wasn't, man is not evolving. We were created. When Adam was created and placed in that garden, Satan seen it. He never went to Adam. Why? I believe because Satan, for, he's a punk, he's a coward, he's, a, uh, he's an emasculated being, which means there's no way Satan can ever come to a man, right? because he don't have that signal of a man. So he waited for the woman to come on the scene, right? And I say this because when Eve came on the scene, this is where Satan revealed itself, right? To Eve. Uh, he's seen Eve's desires, right? He's seen that uh, every day, Eve was looking at the tree of knowledge of good and evil. She was looking at it. Adam, he's looking at his wife, flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. Because if you remember, Adam, he, he was missing something. God seen he was missing something. He, there was something, there was a part of him missing. And when that came, he said, whoa, man, God ain't had to tell him this is your wife. No, Adam said, this is flesh in my flesh, bone on my bone. So Adam already had what he wanted, but Eve was missing something. And that was that uh, tree of knowledge of good and evil. Satan seen her desires. He seen that every time he walked and he see her looking at the tree. So of course he came to her. He said, why you keep looking at this? Go ahead and get some. She said, nah. My husband told me that God, my husband told me that God said we can't eat this. And this this is why I believe people will serve Satan. Satan don't have to lie to people so much now. He's he's telling them the truth, well, part truth, right? Thou shalt not surely die. Because if you know the day of you will eat of it, you will be like God, possession that knowledge of good and evil. So when a woman seen it was good to eat, she ate. And if you peep game, she just handed that fruit over to Adam, who was sitting right next to her. So this is a this is a call out to this our, our men. Make sure we're not letting the snake into our house speak to our women, right? But anyway, uh, Adam being the effeminate being he is, and and I I, I don't I don't call him out too much because uh, Adam is inside of all of us. This is why we needed Jesus, right? Uh, but the woman. The point I was trying to make to give a brief synopsis that the, the man desired his wife, but the wife didn't so much desire her husband initially. She desired godlike power. Inside of us, and especially inside of a woman, there is an innateness to want to lead, um, to want to wanna be in control, but God didn't make it that way, right? God, 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 is, God does everything in decency and in order, right? So if Adam has said that the command came from God to Adam, right? So Satan came to Eve with a command, right? So Adam forsook the command 
of God and follow the command of his wife. Um, and not to get too deep into it, but that's the power women have today, right? Especially a black woman, y'all so powerful and so strong. You got to realize the glory that is on you is so powerful that a man will forsake the command of God just to, just to keep your glory around him. Angels, as you won't see in day two, will forsake the presence of God just to your glory. Why? I believe because a woman is the only creation of God that can bridge the gap between spirit, the spirit realm and the physical realm. What do I mean by that? Uh, we are tripartite being, man is spirit. We live in a body, we have a soul. So if we spirit first, that woman getting planted with a seed, right? We don't see it, right? Nine months later, that seed manifests into a, a, a human person. They're the only being that can bridge that gap. That's why in some cultures and religions, you see the worship of women. Because I, I believe, uh, I believe uh, the identity crisis or the role reversal is the fact that a woman needs that adoration to the point where they don't mind being worshipped, but God had made us that way, right? But that's getting too deep to it, right? Let's, let's get back on topic. So, 